Welcome everyone. I'm Amy Seeley, president of Seeley Test Pros, helping students to succeed in all kinds of tests from eighth grade to grad school in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm Mike Bergen, president of Chariot Learning, helping students with test school and life based out of Rochester, New York. Between the two of us today, we have over 50 years of experience at the highest levels of the test preparation and supplemental education industries. We both love to talk and learn about the latest issues in education, testing, and college admissions. So let's get down to tests and the rest. The fascinating topic we want to explore today is crafting your college resume. But first, let's meet our special guest, Judy Rabinovitz. Judy Rabinovitz is a certified educational planner with more than 35 years of experience in college counseling and school placements. She earned degrees in mathematics and computer science from the University of Connecticut and Rutgers University, both with highest honors. She is the author of numerous articles, books, and software products on educational planning and test preparation. She has successfully guided more than 8,000 students through the planning and application process for private school, college, and graduate school. As a founding faculty member of two private schools in Boca Raton, Florida, Judy created their college guidance programs and served as their director of college guidance. Judy founded Score at the Top Learning Centers and Schools in South Florida. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Judy, it's so great to have you back on the show. We've really been looking forward to covering this topic of crafting college resumes since we last had you on the show, uh, episode 139, Building an A-plus Extracurricular Resume. And we had so many questions about the college resume that we said, all right, let's schedule another uh, podcast to discuss that thoroughly. But before we get into that, please let us know what you've been up to. What I've been up to... It's been a crazy admission season. Um, in fact, I just posted all over Facebook um, extraordinary data comparing last year's admission stats to this year's. In fact, it even went on our um, test prep tribe site. Um, this year, there was just an extraordinary number of deferrals, denials, wait lists from some of our nation's most competitive and largest institutions. Um, very hard pill for a lot of families to swallow. And so I published today um, using data from College Kickstart, um, George Fan's uh, program that really, sh that highlights um, graphically the tremendous growth in applications and thus the, the huge um, decline in the percentage of admitted students. Like for example, Harvard just admitted overall roughly three and a half percent of all the applicants. So figure, I don't remember what the number was, it might've been 50 or 60,000 applications. And most kids who apply to a place like Harvard um, are not just you know, B or B plus students you know, taking a shot. They tend to be among our nation's most successful students. And you know, only three and a half of them, I'm not sure how you'd get a half a kid, but three and a half of three them. Three and a half percent, percent. right. <laughs> so, so you know, it came out also with um, the lowest admission rate ever just a couple of days ago, 4.5%. And it struck me, and I wonder how it strikes you, Judy, to see articles like the one that was released by in Washington Post a couple of days ago, how great it is that so many people feel empowered to apply to all these top schools. Why is it so great if they're just not getting in and it's just making it even harder to uh, cut through? Yeah, I think it's it's great for the colleges yes. because it's giving them bragging rights, but unfortunately it, it's making so many families really sad, um, you know, to hear about, you know, the small percentage of, of kids who are getting in. And it's like these kids, are, you know, like the, the next year's crop of seniors is thinking about, okay, what do I have to do to stand out? You know, if the if valedictorians with perfect 1600s and fives on all their AP exams or sevens on all their IB exams, if they are getting denied, how am I going to get in? And so it does take a thoughtful approach to the college admissions process, effectively backing yourself up um, and understanding that there's a lot of schools that instead of having just say sort of stretch target and safe, I've created a new category this year called lottery and putting a, a lot of colleges in a student's lottery saying, there's just no telling. Yes, you're very highly qualified, but the chances of getting in are like if you sat down at a roulette table 
assuming that you're old enough to, to play roulette, <laughs> um, you know, and, and what are the chances of you're putting it on number four, your lucky number, and you're winning? So it's funny. I've always thought there was a lottery category, but <laughs> certainly in this, this last cycle, the, the odds of winning that lottery were reduced even more significantly, like as you're saying, due to the overwhelming number of applications. And of course, it'll be interesting to see in next year's cycle, whether we see a similar trend. So of course, what are students asking themselves? How am I going to stand out? So this, I think, is a great lead in right to our topic. So if we're talking about creating a college resume, how important do you think a college resume is um, in the admissions process, submitting one to a school? Okay. So to me, it's a no brainer. It's vital. You have to. You have to be an engaged student. You Colleges are going to be judging you not on just how academically successful you'll be on their campus, but how you will impact the rest of the student body. And the only way to predict that is to see what have you done within your own small community to have an impact on, on those around you in, in a very, very positive way. And I think that will be as important, if not more important next year, because so many of our nation's top colleges have announced that they are extending test optional for at least one more year because testing in some parts of this country are still, it's still sketchy. It's still hard to, you know, to find a seat. So in one sense, they're being, you know, you know, munificent, they're, you know, giving <laughs> opportunities, but by the same token, they're, by the way, also giving themselves bragging rights as colleges to be able to talk about the fact that, you know, we had a 102% increase in our college applications or that for the first time in history, a private university in the United States, NYU, had more than 100,000 applications. Mm -hmm. So, it's incredibly important that a student find her voice and use it on her application. So essentially a college will look at, it's a holistic evaluation process up to a point because a college is going, going to look at, you know, students' demographics and very much look at students' data. And so that data is gonna play a primary role. The data of course is your academic record, um, not just the GPA, but the the level of challenge, the courses, the sequence, um, the increasing level of rigor, um, the test scores. So test optional doesn't mean test blind. It means we'll consider your scores if you send them, which means that kids who have very competitive scores and who know how the game is played are going to send those scores. And kids who don't have really competitive scores are not going to send the scores. So this year, for example, I worked with a number of students who are very much at the top of their class, and they submitted scores to some colleges, but not all of them. Others. Okay, but the next thing is your, is the student's voice. So in other words, who are you as a person? Well, I can tell as a college admission officer who you are based on your essays, your recommendations, and especially your resume, because your resume is going to reflect you know, three, four, or more years of commitment to the things that really matter to you. Um, things that hopefully also support your choice of major. Well, in the absence of test scores, all of a sudden your voice becomes even more important. And I'm going to say the one thing that you have more control over almost than anything else will be your extracurricular commitment. Sure, you're going to write, you know, your essays, you know, are, you know, vital and that's you know, yet a whole other topic, but that's something that you're gonna sit down and you're gonna write in let's say four or five hours, and then you might go through eight or 10 revisions, you know, and it's done for, you know, but when it comes to your, your extracurricular commitment, that reflects the things that you started in middle school as a foundation and how you built upon them and focused in on the more meaningful aspects of you know, your, your things that enrich your life and others. And that's your resume. So actually one third of all colleges um, have asked for a resume or optionally asked for a resume upload this year on Common App. Um, and for those kids, um, for those colleges that didn't ask for a resume upload, there's actually some, some interesting ways to get your resume details onto Common App. So Judy, I just want to ask, does this resume look like the kind of professional resume that job seekers create? 
Okay, so I'm going to say, Mike, that the content is incredibly similar to what you as an adult, if you were going out looking for a job, you wanted to be hired as a test prep tutor, you would highlight um, not only where you worked, but sort of what were your special accomplishments as a test prep tutor? Um, perhaps how many students you worked with, um, perhaps your, your maximum or average score gains, perhaps how you felt your students had benefited above and beyond scores. So in terms of a resume that a high school student creates, it is not like just a list of, you know, I've done X, Y, and Z. It specifically highlights for the, each activity, um, and it shouldn't be a whole lot of activities, it should really just be a precious few, but what the student has specifically accomplished, not the mundane, you know, routine tasks, but what made that student stand out? So, you know, as, as you just alluded, we don't expect the modern student, and you definitely spoke about this in building your extracurricular resume, we don't want students to have a long list of activities so much as a list of areas in which they focused and they led and they made things happen. So rather than just like a list, oh, a couple of things, I was on the debate team, I was in mock trial, each of those entries would have a list of, I was on the, you know, prepared for this tournament, led my team to this. We're looking for a lot of action verbs, Judy? Treme tremendous. In fact, virtually every line, other than for instance, other than the fact that you're going to say itemize or, or list your, your various accolades, let's say within debate, where did you break to octos? Where, where did you place highly? Which invitational tournaments? Um, were they national? Were, were they you know, regional, et cetera? Um, but you're, you're going to highlight the fact that perhaps you're the one who made all the arrangements for um, hosting particular tournaments or for arranging the, you just, you know, the, the, trans, the logistics, the transportation for your team to get to you know, Washington DC to, to compete. Um, you're gonna include some of, of your special training or how you've mentored um, younger debaters, or perhaps you've done an extra, you've created your own extracurricular activity that teaches debate to, um, you know, to a Title I school, to a school that doesn't get a lot of funding, and you've gone in, let's say, to that middle school, and you've gotten kids excited about, you know, public forum, but you can do this with anything. A science student could create, you know, a, a Dora the Explorer science club for, middle school children and do come in and do like physics or chemistry experiments and you know poof everything goes up in smoke and um <laughs> not literally but um and where you can get the kids really excited so that you're really you know reaching out but i, I want to backtrack a moment and just give you one thing on appearance because it's not a stiff and formal looking it shouldn't be it doesn't right. have to be a stiff and the and stationary formal. doesn't matter anymore like you know <laughs> picking out a special well, font and paperweight well, well, the only time the stationery would matter, and this doesn't happen during COVID, but in normal times, if you're having an alumni interview, nothing says more about you than when you bring your resume, let's say, on really crisp white paper, Ooh. perhaps inside a small portfolio, uh, paper, you know, portfolio with a pocket, maybe with your business card, because I, I like my students to have their own business cards, and, and those are also very special mini resumes. Getting shades of American psycho here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And, you know, and hand, I mean, think about when you interview someone, don't you like it when someone, even though they've emailed you your, the resume, it's nice when, when you get handed that resume. But I really think a student's personality can come out on a resume. And so I think it's important for that resume to pop. Um, it might be color coded to match the university's exact colors. It might have graphics um, so that if someone's not gonna read through the resume, they can look at the graphics and, and you know, if, if they see a particular symbol, they know immediately, you know, what it means. And I like my kids to, you know, not list every activity, but to put them in categories. And the categories are not like generic things like school activities, outside activities. It might be um, debate and politics. So perhaps it's, it's not only my debate club, but, um, or debate team, 
but perhaps also the fact that I serve on the mayor's council in my community. And maybe I'm part of student government. And maybe I took a, an AP government politics um, course over the summer. So I can put all those things in a category that I've just created. Or maybe there's one that says STEM related activities. And it might be the things that I've done, um, maybe the special programs, um, apps that I've created, or languages that I'm self-taught in computer science. Um, but firmly, you know, something that makes someone want to read your resume. So I think what's really interesting about what you're talking about is this idea of how you want to package yourself. That like, obviously, on a common app, you're just listing things out, but the resume gives you the opportunity to almost kind of shape or form the vision that you want the reader to have. Like you're saying, right. like grouping activities that are related or highlighting certain skills or experiences you've had that you're just not going to get probably with just a list or something on the Common App. Is that sort of the idea of adding some dimension and some packaging that we don't get the opportunity to do on like, let's say a common app? I would say to some extent, yes. But so here's the, the interesting point. Common app gives you 150 characters to describe each of uh, up to 10 activities. So students who don't have resumes are likely to, to put something down like, you know, I, I've been on the swim team for four years and really enjoy the competition. But the thing is, there's also a title in there where you're going to say swim team. There's also an, a specific area where you indicate that it was grades 9 through 12. There's another you hours per week. So they already know you've been on the swim team for all four years and how committed you are. So that, those 150 characters can be better used by stealing from your resume. Perhaps take the first two or three bullet points from, from your resume condense those, abbreviate words, get rid of um, superfluous words, uh, the, um, separate them perhaps by semicolons. And, and now I have a couple of very staccato action statements about why I like to swim or what my specialty is or just something very special to make my swim stand out. And perhaps it's the fact that I qualified for junior nationals or I, um, you know, qualified for you know the, the olympics or that i've set my team record in such and such so if i've created a resume i can steal blatantly from that resume and so that for the for the applications reader in, in college whether she's looking at a resume or not just looking at that common app those common app descriptions is really going to help me as a reader understand who you are and you basically you're using that resume to market yourself. It's definitely your marketing tool. That's fantastic, Judy. You know, we've gone through such an unusual period over the last year and the conventional means of building a resume or the activities that students were really focused on pre-COVID, they couldn't do it. And I know that it feels like we're getting COVID under control, but life is uncertain. Mm -hmm. If the college resume and the commitment to all of these extracurricular activities is so important. How can students be ready in advance to create an effective resume and everything that goes into it under unusual circumstances? Right, which certainly characterized what we've had for the past, what roughly, you know, 14 or 15 months, <laughs> unfortunately. So I'll start by saying that there have been many online opportunities, for example, all of last summer's in-person summer programs were canceled um, or, or at least you know, made virtual. And this year it's going to be true for many of them. But there's nothing wrong with doing a specific program. I can do, let, let's just say, you know, the communications program at Syracuse University. And I'm just guessing that there was this virtual this year, maybe it's not, but I can do that virtual. And yes, these kids are sick of virtual school, but this is different because um, this is far more engaging. So there's certainly virtual programs that students can take advantage of. Um, I had plenty of students this year who did really, I'd say relatively unique things. Um, at the beginning of COVID, um, we had a student who created a website to help 
people find out where they could buy toilet paper because it was in such high demand. Um, I have another student who took some of the blogs and emails I had been doing and turned them into a website to be able to keep students abreast about, um, students in Virginia where she lived, abreast about things like test center closings or colleges that suddenly announced that they were you know, test optional um, or colleges with, that were now having robust virtual programs for visiting. And so she turned this into her own website, shared it with kids in Virginia. Um, and then f a few of her friends got on board and helped spread this you know, even further. One last thing I'll say that is that some of these activities are still, ex normal activities are still existing, but with far less impact. And so what I'm having my students do with their resumes, no matter what year they're in, because we start working on them as early as honestly, eighth or ninth grade, um, for an activity that has been curtailed, like one of my students was bemoaning the fact that her the pre-med club, which is normally so active at her school this year, has not been able to bring in too many guest speakers and, you know, just it wasn't that same level of, of activity, even though she's a leader in, in this club. <clears throat> so we skirted the issue by indicating the different things that have been done beforehand and things she was looking forward to, but we also footnoted the activity. And at the bottom of the resume for <clears throat> any activity that was curtailed, it basically says activity somewhat curtailed by the pandemic. So that colleges will know at least what was planned and why there may be you know, a dearth of information about a couple of the activities because they just couldn't be accomplished. That's great. What's interesting too about what you're saying is it sounds like some students though have had some unique opportunities because of the pandemic to engage in activities that would not have existed. Like when you're talking about somebody on their own from their home, creating a website, about something unique to COVID and how to help people that in some cases, some students might've been empowered to actually do things that would not have been, would never have been thought of, would never have been you know, necessary prior to COVID then. So this creativity about what you can do that you would never have imagined prior to COVID probably. Uh, completely true. And I know, I'm sure that other educational consultants um, and counselors, just like me, when, when kids, you know, come to us and say, you know, like, well, what can we do? We'll start working with them to brainstorm ideas based on who they are and what their interests, you know, already are. Perhaps you're just reading books aloud and then posting them, you know, on YouTube so that, let's say, young children who can't get to the library um, and would still love to be able to read can have a book read to them or an older person. So, I mean, it, it, there are things that are appropriate, you know, at each level. That's terrific. Is there a long-term benefit to this? I just know how challenging it can be for adults to create resumes. Mm -hmm. If students go through this process early, they get them ready for college. What have you seen as the long-term benefit? So first of all, yes, it can be very overwhelming to create a resume from scratch if you're already, let's say, a junior and you haven't done it already. So certainly when I get my hands on kids as, as young as middle school, and I do presentations for middle school parents all the time, I teach parents how to become better, much better record keepers for their children and begin to build that resume. So hopefully by the time they get to me, there's already something in place and I may go in and work with the student to really tweak it, edit it. But then it's very important that that resume be continually updated, just as you as an adult will, should continually update your resume so that if there's ever a job opportunity, you're ready for it. So now what happens, I've applied to college, I've got my resume, I'm not done with it. That resume, it, you might now say, remove some of the graphics, you might take out some less germane things. You might cut it back because an activity resume when you apply to college can be up to two pages. I don't like to see a professional resume that long unless you're really a very highly seasoned professional. But my advice to all of my students is as soon as you get involved in an activity in college, and yes, you have to keep doing that because not only will it enrich your life, but if you're gonna be looking for graduate school or research or internships or jobs, 
um, you need to keep a resume up to date so that my, the students who I work with are gonna be continually in the habit of updating their resumes. Um, they've gotten a teaching assistantship, they did community service, not necessarily every little thing, but the things that really matter. And I would say this is especially important if you're thinking about going to med school, um, to law school, because you absolutely need a resume for any type of graduate school application. And certainly when you're looking for internships or jobs. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, I feel like we could talk about crafting a college resume all day. Unfortunately, Judy, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me again. It's really been a pleasure. And um, I hope we can do this again and share, share knowledge with, you know, families who need more information to um, enrich their children's lives and plan for college. Oh, Judy, you know that we will. Uh, if listeners want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? So they can certainly do my email, which is Judy, J-U-D-I. I changed it when I was in eighth grade. Um, <laughs> thought I was more sophisticated at score at the top .com. And those are all written out as individual words, score at the top .com. And through our website, um, either score at the top .com or JRA Educational Consulting, um, there's a, a link for contact us and you'll reach me or any of the other college counselors on my team. Awesome. We hope you enjoyed this discussion as much as we did. Be sure to join us for another fascinating topic and guest on the next tests and the rest.